All right, so where we last met, uh, we talked about the difference in the sex chromosomes between males and females, with female having, females having the two uh, larger X chromosomes with many more genes, and then the males with the dinky little Ys. Now, um, this has uh, some practical implications, uh, because uh, on that little uh, Y chromosome, the, the most significant gene is the SRY gene, which causes the uh, embryological gonads to develop as testes, and there are some other genes associated with operating the testes. Uh, now, uh, the X chromosome being significantly larger with many more genes uh, has a number of genes that are related to uh, the production of proteins that have no impact on sex characteristics. Now this gene that's located on uh, a sex chromosome is typically referred to as being a sex link gene, uh, but since uh, almost all the sex link genes are found on the X chromosome in humans, uh, when we talk about sex, uh, sex link genes, in essence we're referring to uh, genes found on the X chromosome. So those, those phrases will be synonymous. Uh, now, uh, genes found on the X chromosome uh, unrelated to uh, sex uh, relate to color blindness, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and uh, hemophilia. So you'll want to have some sort of passing familiarity with uh, each of these conditions. Uh, now, let's think of the implications of the uh, different number of sex chromosomes found uh, in males. Uh, and females. Now, uh, again, females have the ability to be uh, homozygous uh, or heterozygous for uh, X-linked conditions, whereas males, uh, being hemizygous, either have uh, the traitor condition or, or do not have the traitor condition. Now, looking at the practical uh, implications of this, uh, in the instance of, say, um, hemophilia, uh, since it is X-linked and recessive, uh, the gene certainly will be found on the X chromosome and males possessing the recessive allele uh, are going to have the condition. Now, if a uh, male has a condition but mates with a female that is homozygous dominant, none of the kids will end up having the condition, even though some females will be carriers. Uh, now, um, if the father doesn't have the condition, uh, but the mother, mother is um, a carrier, none of the daughters will have it, but half the sons will, uh, because if the father doesn't have the condition, all the daughters are going to have a dominant allele even if the mother passes on a recessive allele uh, to a daughter. Now, um, that said, males are significantly more likely to inherit uh, X-linked recessive conditions uh, simply because they don't have that backup chromosome, that backup X chromosome. Now, on the flip side, um, you can consider X-linked dominant conditions. Uh, again, X-linked dominant conditions are exceptionally rare. Uh, there's like an inherited form of a rickets or a bone softening uh, disease that are X-linked and dominant. But in that instance, females are more likely to inherit uh, the X-linked dominant condition uh, in this case because they have two X chromosomes or two chances to inherit the dominant allele, uh, whereas males only have one X chromosome and one opportunity to inherit the dominant allele. But again, by and large in humans, it's going to be X-linked and recessive with males being more likely to have the condition and females being um, more likely to be unaffected. Now. Um, there was an excellent question asked earlier in the week about why females uh, don't produce uh, large quantities or excessive quantities of some particular protein uh, if uh, they are homozygous dominant uh, some for some particular gene. And the answer to that is uh, X chromosome inactivation. Early on in embryological development here, um, what will happen to some X chromosomes is that they'll be randomly inactivated or switched off. Uh, and then at that point, the DNA condenses into this little uh, sphere called a bar body. So this is uh, an image of the nucleus of the cell of a, a female. And uh, looking in the nucleus, we can see that um, there is this darkly stained region. Again, that's the condensed DNA from one of the X chromosomes. So uh, in essence, females have one functioning X chromosome and then one inactivated X chromosome. Now what's fascinating in this instance is uh, what results if a female is heterozygous uh, for a particular gene found in the X chromosome. Uh, this uh, causes what's uh, referred to as mosaicism. Now, uh, if a female is heterozygous for some particular gene uh, and uh, certain X chromosomes are inactivated, if the uh, recessive gene is inactivated uh, in a particular cell, it will lead to a different uh, phenotypic expression than if the dominant uh, gene was inactivated uh, in that cell. So ultimately what that results in are females that can have uh, a combination of phenotypes due to uh, different X chromosomes being switched on or off. 
So in the case of these turtle shell cats, um, if the uh, dominant allele is uh, active and the uh, recessive allele is inactive, then the cat will produce uh, one color fur. Uh, but if the uh, recessive allele is uh, activated and the dominant allele is inactivated, uh, or the dominant or the allele on the dominant chromosome is inactivated, uh, then uh, the other color uh, will be expressed. So it's really a pretty fascinating um, level of complexity added to uh, phenotypes in females. Uh, and then, you know, this sort of walks you through the visual for uh, how that occurs. Uh, again, a female will be diploid for the X chromosome, so there are two copies of this particular gene for fur color. And early on uh, in the development of the organism, in some cells, the uh, uh, allele for one color will be inactivated, and in other cells, the allele for the other color will be activated, and that leads to this combined coloration. Uh, that we see. Uh, another example of this is sweat glands uh, in females. There's a gene on the X chromosome related to the production of uh, sweat glands. In a uh, female is heterozygous for that particular gene, uh, certain patches of her skin will produce sweat glands and certain patches will not, just depending upon um, which X chromosome was randomly inactivated uh, as an embryo. So pretty fascinating stuff.